Hi, I'm Aaron, and welcome to the Slim, Fitty, and Biggie Committee podcast, where me and my best friends, Danny and Matt, take a deep dive into hip hop, the genre that has formed an integral part of our lives. Please like, subscribe, and follow us on Instagram at the underscore Slim, Fitty, Biggie Committee, and stay tuned for any upcoming podcast news. Coming up on today's show, we have a collaboration from former Slaughterhouse members Joel Ortiz and King Crooked on their new album, Hard. All right, let's get into it. The Slim Fitty Big Committee podcast, Joel Ortiz and King Crooked, their next album is Hard. Mmm, indeed it is. And Aaron was the... uh, person who got to pick this um this project so this this for me as soon as you said this i was like this is definitely an aaron like project this is what i expect yeah. you to yeah, pick 100%. So, please tell me how we went from shay noir to <laughs> Noel Ortiz and king crooked what was the like what was the thought behind this choice to be honest they were both completely separate choices but, um, you know, I feel like Shane Noir from now on is always going to be the outlier for, like, the shit album that we reviewed. Or, <laughs> like, we always refer to it as the worst album. Boy, um, her new album just came out. Did you see? I know. I did see it. A um, Hollow Brown produced album. It's out. I know. I know. I Next did week, see it came out. Tuned. Next week. So, <laughs> <laughs> Guys, don't spoil, um, don't spoil my choice. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I chose this album um, because for for a few reasons. The first being uh, it's on Spotify, and I know Danny doesn't have Spotify. Ew, uh, you got me. Uh, nah, you showed nah, me. Nah, nah, nah. Nah, um, <laughs> I chose this because I've been a. I was a fan of Slaughterhouse when they first came out with their first album, um, and then like it, it was supposed to be that you know power group. Joel Ortiz, Crooked Eye at the time, now is King Crooked, Royce to 5'9", uh, Joe Budden, and like, you know, helped out by Eminem. It just felt like there was so much going to happen. And then they had their first album, which was okay, or which was good, and then the second album kind of fell off and they separated. But I've been a fan of King Crooked for a while, and I have also thought for a long time that he's underrated in his lyricism and as a rapper he just is very underground and he doesn't have a lot of notoriety but i think he's been he's been really good for a long time he just doesn't have a solid solo album um and joel ortiz he has bars as well so i was like an album of those two together i'm a fan of slaughterhouse i'm a fan of these two so let's review this album you know um also interesting to do an album where you could assess each person on their own merits like you know who won the album joel or king crooked and i think that will be almost a more interesting comparison at the end of this album to see who we thought won um what how did you find out about this album because i found it found out about it one way but you found out about it before me how did you find yeah out? i was onto this for weeks before you even knew about oh, it so i was just hero. sitting what on a it. hero well i i tend to research so like i was listening to king crooked um and then spotify lets me know about new releases so okay. obviously yeah. this was coming out and i was just doing some research and i didn't say anything i just sat on it um because i think it was around the time when we reviewed the um Sahai the prince um, NAACP that I was aware of it. And so I just sat on it because um, I knew it would be some time before I get to, got to go again. So, yeah. Um, yeah. And then probably the week before I decided this album, <clears throat> Danny, you were like, oh, have you heard of this album? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like literally the second I saw that it existed, I was like, oh, shit, i got to tell Aaron about this because this is like, I know Crooked Eye is like, you know, your favorite or one of your, one of your favorites. Uh, yeah. Anyway. So I was like, oh shit, have you heard about this? And I gave it a quick little listen and I was like, 
okay, this, this might be worth recommending to Aaron. Like, I literally listened to like 10 seconds of, of like a couple of songs. And I was like, okay, sounds, sounds good enough. Um, yeah, because I hadn't listened to it before I recommended it as well. So I was also like, all right, I'm going to go in fresh. And I like albums that, because for you two, we've mostly been doing albums that, you know, you have both listened to before. And then you got one person who is aware of it and two people who've never listened to it. Um, and so I like when all three of us are on the same page. Like we haven't heard of it and it's we're all coming in the same amount of time to review the album. Yeah. Mm. And Matt, do you have any kind of like, did you have any expectations? I don't, I don't think you're as big a fan of uh, either of these two than Aaron is. No, not as like, no, nowhere near as big as Aaron is. But like I recently have, um, I don't know, become more interested in King Crooked in particular because of his um, show. Yeah, um, Crooked Corner. Correct. So, mm. what, what because, guest? What guest appeared on that show that made you interested in Cook's Corner? Um, I think it was. Um, I think it was Sh- Sh- Shay Noir. Actually, I think. Oh, no, uh, tell, <laughs> tell the truth. <laughs> Look, it may have been uh, a slimmest of the shadiest. Oh, it could okay. have been. Oh. Yeah. Surprise! Surprise! Yeah, yeah. Wow. interesting. Interesting. The no, plot like, thickens because he like does stuff like that you know that i love watching videos and like i like if, hmm, if 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 there was a music video for a song and obviously the song by itself i would always watch the music video because then i get like to watch and listen at the same time and like i don't know for, for me that was something that was appealing about um you know his show because it's like i could see him i could get like a understanding of like who he is as a person and like i don't know yeah. I, I like that so then when i wanted to do this i was like okay that's cool i can i can like do that i'm interested in that and i really like um his voice in particular um from the show or from rapping no just from rapping yeah okay yeah I think he's got a, a nice voice for like not and that's not the right word i think he's got like a gritty voice i think not as not like a Michi darker gritty, but like still a, a gritty voice. Yeah, I like. I think this will be interesting because, um, you know, obviously Matt, you kind of are aware of Royce. You're not really aware of Slaughterhouse, so it's like I'm interested to see which way you go with Joel or King Crooked in terms of who won. Um, and yeah, I'm just because I there are two solo tracks on this album as well, so. I pretty much split the two solo tracks as who won the solos and then, you know, who wins the dual tracks each. Same. And then it comes out, yeah. There's no draws. Someone yeah. is going to come out a winner. Yeah. Best Agreed. out of seven. Best out of seven. It's and just my mother the- in life. My life. What do you mean? I'm not. I'm very aware of Slaughterhouse. <laughs> yeah, the best song. Bit of CeeLo, C- you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's what they're known for. Yeah. CeeLo Green. He's the, the unknown member. member. Yeah, the best member of Slaughterhouse. Can I just say that, that song is a good song? You can say it's that. not their best. It'd be, it'd be wrong, but you can say it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. I'm glad we've got that. The out. other thing I'll say about this album, and we haven't had this before, is the amount of different producers on this album. Like, yeah. we have well, all known, the other well known producers. Yeah, but but there's like but the amount like in eight tracks, how many of them like actually feature? So um, you know, it's interesting in this album that they got a lot of different producers to to feature. So um that's what also piqued my interest in this, that it wasn't just, you know, one producer with the one sound, it was multiple producers having a go at this and yeah. definitely have my favorite um Instrumental for sure. I have my favorite. You, you have oh, you have a favorite instrument. Yeah, for sure. I don't know if I do. I'm trying to think about it. And I, don't, I don't know. For the first time, I that. have my favorite producer. Do you boys have the same? Um, uh, yeah. I probably, probably I do. It's probably going to be the same as you guys, probably. And I also have my favorite lyrics too, which I've Actually, struggled with oh. in the past. 
I didn't I didn't do lyrics, but I uh, thinking about it now, I think Matt has a different producer than you, Aaron. Yes, I would probably agree. I think I know whose his is. Yeah, same. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we could be proven wrong. But yeah, we could be. You know, I could be edgy on this one. Who knows? Oh, for f- uh. Mate, that is so last podcast. <laughs> that is so. <laughs> uh, oh, damn. All right, let's get into the first track. I'm going to kick it off. My album, track one, Hard. So um, from the beginning, Soul Sample. And as like the opening track, you have a soul sample and heavy and like some heavy drums in the background. It just makes me really happy. It like sets up the album really nicely. It sets my expectations quite high. Um, and this was produced by the Heat Makers, um, who are quite well known in the game. Um, the the one thing that I will say before I get into Joel and King Crooked's performance is this hook by MRKSX. Yep. I did not like it. Nope. I felt like it was a but it just was so unnecessary and it took away from the bars. Um if you gave me this track without the hook, I would be so much happier. Yep. It just didn't hit the the vibe that they were going for. Yeah, it feels it was just like out of place. It feels so out of place. Yeah. And I don't know, it just it just it just was weird. It was a weird interlude between the verses. It was strange at the end. It just it just fucked up the song completely, I think. Um like not completely, but it just took away from the power of the lyrics. Um especially if they'd just gone bar for bar. Um so yeah. They definitely lacked in terms of the hook, but the bars were really good. Like King Crooked went first, um, and he said some interesting shit. Um, but I still didn't think King Crooked hit his peak. He wasn't at his best, but it was a solid start. Um, the other interesting thing is he had that reference to like where they met. Um, and they met at the 2007 double XL freshman cover, which is, which I didn't know I had to look into, but on um, on Genius it says 2008, but it was actually 2007. So can't always trust Genius. I was actually looking through the years, and I've got to say the that was a one with Hendrick. No, it wasn't. That no, was this, a poor year. Wait, this one? The 2007 one. Yeah, the one that they're on. Yeah, it wasn't that good, not compared to like, They've got years with Kendrick that, like, are way better. Trust me, there are way worse years than this one. This is, like, your mid-tier. Yeah, I, reckon. I guess. I actually can't remember. I think Lupe Fiasco's in, in this one. Yeah, he is. There's a, there's a few really good ones. Can you Do you have it with you? Can you name them? I don't them? have it with me right now. Um, but I will say it's not as big. The, the problem is, like, these – rappers never got to the the heights of like mainstream so they're really good but they never reach the same heights as your kendricks and your mainstream artists well who was in the kendrick year uh let me just bring it kanye west no it's good you've come prepared that's good (laughs) you you mentioned the kendrick year and and who came out of it kendrick it's definitely kanye west kanye 2008 yeah it's no graduate Graduation. Yeah, it was 2011. It was Kendrick, Meek Mill, Mac Miller, Big Crit, Yellow Wolf, Sci High, The Prince. Oof, that My is boy. A that's a very strong. Yeah, that's a huge list. I love Sci High. Uh, you've not named the four dudes who you have no idea who they are, have you? No. Who were the other ones? Well, oh, hold on. <laughs> okay, forget about it. Forget about it. Oh, David. Uh, <laughs> nah, Lil Twist, Lil B, Fred the Godson, YG is actually in there, and oh, Diggy Simmons. How did you leave YG off? He's so good. His first two albums are gold. <laughs> actually, that's the next one I'm picking. So, yeah. I, yeah. I remember when we were at the shopping centre, Southland Shopping Centre, and yeah. I had just bought, Danny, you'd forced me to buy or you twisted my arm, or no, no, you didn't. You were just like, this summer, you know, you need to listen to this in, in your car. And then I remember 
I think we were all together actually, and yeah, we played it, and it was a it was a bit of a bang on that one. Yeah, yeah, that was a good time. Mm. That was a good time. Mm. Anyway, back to my review. We got sidetracked with the double XL. Hey, let's go, go all the years of double XL. All right, Aaron, name every <laughs> every rapper. Let's go. I'd like to see Danny uh, do it. Yeah, I know. No, I just want to hear. He's asking me because he can't do it. Um. Anyway, back to to King Crooked. Um. I I did like his his start in terms of I like that interaction with um never fucking with the beat makers, just the heat makers, and that's obviously the production crew um of yeah. this album. Why? Um, he, I always why like, wait, wait. Why isn't he fucking with the beat makers? He doesn't like beat makers. He's just he's just saying that like you know. He doesn't. He doesn't hang around with them. The only ones he hangs around with is the heat makers. Just like you know, giving them okay. props. Okay, if you say so. Then he has some really cool lines. Um, and I'm a big fan of his pick a flow, a smack a rapper with lyric that'll hit him harder than that M. And he just throws in that faster rap just to show off a little bit. Mm. Um, but I have to say, my favorite line of his, um, there's two, but my first one is. Mine got him green with oh, envy. God. These ends piccolo. Of course, of it's course. just funny because it's like uh, Dragon Ball Z. Yeah. <laughs> <To the, laughs> no, nah, but my actual nah, my no, wait, actual wait, wait, favorite. Matt, did you did you pick that lyric as well, Matt? One of my favorites of the uh, of the whole <laughs> album. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. Any Dragon Ball Z reference is going to get you. Okay, yeah. sorry. Can you just like understand that for a fucking hip hop artist, like to reference a character from Dragon Ball Z? Do you see how cool that is? Like, no, but you don't know how often that happens. Every rapper loves Dragon yeah. Ball. Z. You reckon the amount of the amount of Goku references I've heard over the years is insane. Super Saiyan, going Super Saiyan on the track, like, oh, it's very common. Yeah. Okay. Well, it caught it's just me, a funny reference. It caught me off guard and I laughed. <laughs> yeah. I knew you would. I knew you'd yeah. like it. And the other one was, now I'm like the comedian headlining, I knew I'd get the last laugh. Yeah, I like that a lot. That, to me, is just sick. Like, he's always going to win the, the battle and the headliner, a comedian always goes last and obviously gets the last laugh. Yes. Um, so solid verse from King Crooked. Um, and then Jolie's goes on, and I think he actually sounds better technically. Like, he's just got some some nice lines. Like, I survived in an era where a starter would get you ended. It was cool, get love, but still move with your snub. Cause that eight ball, I'll have playing full pool of blood. Mm. Yeah. And he just has that the yawa. That's a classic. That's like his signature sound. Yeah. Like the the yawa. You hear it all the time. But what um, does it mean? What the hell does it mean? No one knows, but it sounds good. Yeah. Yeah, he just sounds really good in that last verse, I like the last part of the verse, I remember my shop teacher telling me, Stop w- with the beatbox, lunch table hip hop, I'm a flop. He failed me. 20 years later, look who's setting up shop. <laughs> just, mm. you know, I feel like that's a lot of hip-hop artists who, you know, everyone says, stop doing what you're doing. You, you, it's a waste of time. You'll never, ever, ever make it. Um, and then they prove them wrong. Um, and just that, did you guys pick up on that reference that maybe one day we'll reunite at Coachella? Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, because Royce have that, has that. He says in Say That Then... If that should, if that day should come that we should ever part ways, I'll just it'll just be an excuse for us to reunite at Coachella. So it's a cool reference back to say that then when they actually when Royce actually said it. Um, mm. Overall, because the hook isn't good, but the verses are pretty good, I gave it four stars, Ooh. and I'm a fan of the instrumental, so four stars. Okay. And I think Joel Ortiz won this for me. Mm-hmm. I think technically he he sounded better. His lines were a bit stronger, um, and I would I would just go back for him on this one rather than King Crooked. Yeah. Well, I agree, Aaron. You're not alone. I agree with you. I think Joel won this track as well. But I just want to start from back to the beat. Back to the beat. You're gonna start with the beat. Like when I see the heat makers in the liner notes. And I hear the heat makers tag, like this is exactly what I expect to hear. Um, 
like back in the early mid 2000s when like soul sampling and specifically chipmunk soul was like all the rage there were basically three big names do you know who they are well i'm guessing the heat makers heat makers is one but early early to mid 2000s soul so sampling kanye was kanye's there who's, who's and there? um heat makers kanye west uh, just Blaze. He's done it. He's hit it. He got the just yeah. Blaze. Just Blaze. <laughs> yeah. So don't, don't you know? Heat makers were up there. Like Just Blaze and Kanye West still have that name. Like everyone knows Just Blaze. Everyone knows Kanye West. But Heat makers were there. They were neck and neck. Just didn't get the recognition that, that Kanye mm. has got. So, but this is their style. Like they are known for this style of production and I love them for it. That chipmunk, you know, chipmunk soul, that's my shit. And and if you like what you hear on this one, um, you've got to check out, you know, Dipset, you've got to check out Cameron albums from that time period, mid two thousands. That's when mm. the were doing their thing, like like, this is rare now. Like, when I saw Heatmakers three times on this, I was like, holy shit, they're back. Like, they did the Jim Jones album last year. Like, they're coming back, which I love to see. Yeah, um, so they quite quiet at the moment. They're, well, it's just it's just that they were so big once, and, and then they disappeared. Like, Kanye never disappeared. Just Blaze never disappeared. But, like, Heatmakers hmm. stopped being a name for a while. But I mean, they are still the heat makers, so got to give them that. Um, I kind of agree with you with the hook, kind of. It is weak, especially for a track that's called hard. Like the hook yeah. is soft; it's a soft hook. Having said that, though, I do often find myself singing along with the hook, so I guess it's it works for me. Like I actually sing along to it. And at first, first listen, I was like, oh shit, this is trash. This is so, doesn't mesh well with the rest of the song. But when I'm singing along with it, it's like, well, it's going to be working. So I do, yeah. pass. I actually give it a pass. Um, I like how Crooked starts his verse. Like you said, mentioning how they, they first met on the double XL, um, magazine. And yeah, like you said, Brings his signature flow. He's got a couple of funny lines. Um, but by Crooked Eye standards, like you said, the verse overall is just okay. He's done yeah. better. Will do better. And yes, Joel is the winner. Like he also mentions meeting Crooked Eye through the double XL, mm. but like you said, he goes into more detail. He talks about Slaughterhouse as well. So he just, he's one up in Crooked Eye, like, with his lyrics, I think, just a little bit. Um, he just goes harder in general. Like, you picked out a couple of lyrics. You didn't pick out this one, though. I amounted to more than any coward's fingers could count up. I got bullets for haters and a trigger for doubters. Two sig sours. Like, that's yeah. just hard. That's gangster. And again, like you said, you literally said everything that I had to say. Like, his flow is just tighter as well. He just, he outdoes Crooked Eye on this, on this song in almost every way. But, yeah. but overall... How dare you? How bloody dare you? Oh, Matt's going to throw a batter <laughs> in the works. That's interesting. As usual. Yeah. But like overall, really great beat, solid verses. The hook doesn't even annoy me too much. So I'm going to start this review with five stars. Yeah, I can see how the beat grows, how the hook grows on you. Yeah. I just haven't gotten to the point in my listening where I am forgiving it yet. Yeah, I want to hear what Matt thinks about the hook. All right, so you can't call track one capital H A R D and and start with this. What you cannot, you cannot do that. It, I, oh, if I God. if I see hard, I'm expecting a like a like a a banging slapping like some sort of beat that's going to knock my socks off like, mm. to start with. Then yeah. on top of that. You, you you feed me this like R and B slow hook that just completely like is the opposite of anything hard, and mm. it's just like why why would you why would you do that? The only thing hard about this song are the verses, and for me, um, it goes to King Crooked, but I have to give it to King Crooked because 
my favorite lyrics from this song go to him as well. So it's like he stood out to me. I can see what you're both saying about Joel, but I, yeah, I, I, I think I'm, I'm a bit biased too because like I, I prefer King Crooked's voice um, yeah. to yeah. Joel's. So I, I think and my ears, Dragon Ball Z, so. yeah, and Dragon Ball Z. So my ears perk up when I hear King Crooked <laughs> come on. Um, yeah. He's just darker. He's grittier. He's like he is hard. Like he, his sound is hard, mm. and his bars yeah. are harder for me in some parts of this album than Joel's. But mm. maybe I need to listen more closely to Joel. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, what else could I? Say? So you don't like the beat? You don't like the beat? It's not. It's not that I don't like the beat. I, 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 it was pleasant to listen to, but I don't think pleasant was what I was expecting on a track that's titled "Hard." Like, yeah, you think it was like misnamed? Yeah, that it shouldn't be. Like, it should have been not labeled hard because it's not as hard. And I think you're right in a way. We'll see harder tracks coming up. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, but my favourite lyrics, of course, are the one that um, you said, Aaron. Y'all rock. I had to look this up. Y'all rock um, al- aluminium cans, or I think he pronounces it aluminium cans. Your jewelry's Michelob. Mine got him green with envy. These ends piccolo. Um, so I was like, I wanted to know what the, the the bar before the piccolo line was. So. Michelob, or I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, was actually Doesn't like a right. um, is actually like a a brewery, like or a, or a, a distillery company that sold like beer. Um, and obviously, obviously, when they sell, like when we're talking about selling beers, like they would come in bottles or aluminium cans. Um, and he's essentially making the comparison between this company um, and jewelry, and saying that you know your jewelry is like not inexpensive, not classy at all. Um, whereas mine um, has other people green with envy because it's my, my jewelry is so blingy, so flashy um, that that's why we've got you like, I've got you like Piccolo. Um, and interestingly, um, that company, Michelob or Michelob or however you pronounce it. Um, went Definitely apart. not either of the ways you're pronouncing it. Sorry, Shwain Sh- or whatever. <laughs> I, had no idea. I had no idea how to pronounce it. Anyway, um, that that company um, is one of like the lowest performing in terms of like sales for for a beer company in America. And I think they potentially went bust recently and are like closing up or something. So it's just like a, a current affairs reference to that company and then jewelry and stuff as well. So, so I thought that was cool. But I wouldn't have picked that up unless I looked it up. And then, of course, how can I go past a movie quote, you know, or a movie a movie reference? So I'm night crawling like Jake Gyllenhaal. Oh, that <laughs> <laughs> was, was just funny, and I loved it. And both of those good lines, movie as well, such a good yeah, movie. yeah. And both of them came from King Crooked. So I was like, straight up, all right. Well, he wins the um, he wins that song for me because he had my favorite lyrics. So yeah, I will give this track three stars. Woo! Three, damn! Yeah. The yeah. whole spectrum on this one. Yeah, three, because, four, yeah. and five. Mm. Yeah, but like, wow! I can see what both of you are saying, and I, I was also conscious of the fact that in sometimes I've gone in too hard with my ratings, so I wanted to like, and and me too generous. I feel yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I get. I, I like. I get you. I understand where you're coming from. Um, like, it's easy being in the middle. I understand both your points of view. Yeah. And I feel like from this, now I know who your favorite producer is. <laughs> I think I was right. I think I was right. Uh, <laughs> all right. Let's move on to track two, Get Your Money. What a transition. What a... So I said get ya. You didn't pick it up. Oh, yeah, because no one ever says get ya in common conversation. Exactly, that's why it's so smooth. <laughs> Dan, Dan is your flawless one on the last album review, though, as well. So The one you made up, which doesn't exist. No, it does. It does. Aaron messaged me privately and was like, you're right, man. <laughs> I definitely <laughs> didn't <laughs> message you. <laughs> oh, you oh, that's funny. That's good. Yeah. Track two, get your money. Uh, that was funny. Good job, Matt. Why don't you kick this one off? 
I sure, I sure will. Um, okay, so get your money. Uh, I prefer, like, straight out, I definitely prefer this track compared to the first one. Um, the the background vocals, just mes- mesmerizing for me. It just gets me in, like, a, a zone. I loved it. Um, a better hook, too. Much better hook um, that I found. Mm-hmm. Uh, both rappers, I feel like there's going to be, a, like, you're not going to really have a song where you're going to be disappointed with either, what either of these two can do because, like, they're obviously both very talented and, like, they're going to bring bars throughout. So it's, like, almost had me focusing more so on the production and the hook and the overall feel of the song rather than the, the bars because I knew they were going to be good. But still... I, I each track I've rated, like I've said, who's wins because I thought that's what we were doing. So Joel for me wins this time round, and my favorite lyrics on this track are <laughs> in my tank top, looking like the oh, old fear. God, God, enemy killer <laughs> on my hip. Oh, like just like, and then it goes on, it goes on after that. But I just sort of sliced those lyrics. What does he say? He says, I just know, can I just say, I just know both of you jizzed your pants when you heard that 50 cent reference and, and you confirmed it. <laughs> oh, I definitely noticed it for sure. And yeah. Jizzed your pants. Yeah. No, but like, li- like in my tank top looking like the old fifth, remember what he used to look like when I, oh, in the yes. like, He was a monster. Oh. He was a beast. Like, yeah, he was a beast. Like, he's pretty, he was, he's he still looks like, like a beastly right now. Yeah, but like back then he was on some like Buster Rhymes level, like like beefed up cake style. Like he was like, <laughs> yeah, he he he. Not only was he like owning, he owned the rap game for like a certain period of time, but like he also like brought the look with it. So it was like, I don't know. I thought it was a, a cool like shout out to to Fifty Cent, and also <laughs> I have to mention it because it's a Slim Fitty and Biggie committee. So um, yeah. yeah. Um, no, I, I, overall, like, I, I, I like this track. I thought the instrumental was nice. Um, yeah, it was ticking more boxes than the first one was for me. And for that reason, I give it four stars. Yeah. Mm. I think that's pretty harsh because, <laughs> because I loved this. This is hard. This is gangster from start to finish. And I love this hook. Like, I love this hook so much. Every time King Crooker goes, get your money, young man, I'm singing along. Yeah. And, oh, God, I absolutely love this. Like, even though it's wordy, that get your money, young man, helps you just go along with it. Yeah, I agree, um, I agree 100%. It's wordy as, but it works because of the get your money, young man, and the way they play with it. It's so good. Yeah, yeah, it just is amazing. And it's just gangster. There's just heaps of gangster lines here. Um, and what's interesting, Matt, is that um, you're definitely right with the vocal sample. Um, you know, Boogeyman and Eric Sherman on this, another vocal sample. They're getting into our good books with the production on this album. Mm. Um, but I rated Joel and King Crooked differently to you. I rated King Crooked better than Joel. Um, like you didn't really say anything that's really that impressive from Joel. It's good. <laughs> yeah, come on, but like percent reference. How good is that? Come on. <laughs> it, it it is cool how it has you know looking like the old fifth enemy killer on my hip. Like yeah, okay, that's not bad. Um, like no miss. I'm a married man. Wife badder than arrival from ambulances. The hood with traffic jams after them cannons bland. That's like that's that's his bit. that's that's gangster shit. Um, and he's saying that even his wife is gangster. But when I compare it to King Crooked, he sounds bloody good, and he's back on his flow that I expect from him. And like, just listen to these lines. The cabinets were bare. Mm-hmm. Mama could barely prepare the recipes. I got on my grizzly. Then go get the honey. Wanted more than bare necessities, the air, the seven seas, the land. I traveled every place on the face of the earth to repair discrepancies in the generational curse. Went anywhere for extra cheese 
never scared to ever squeeze to drop your diss song. You'll be rap over wax like record sleeves. It's like, you just oh, wrote the whole verse, did you? Pretty much. Yeah. Well, pretty. Time, right? Sorry, I got excited. <laughs> um, but the his rhyme scheme here is amazing. And it just sounds so smooth. It comes off his tongue so easily. Like it just seems to ease out of his mouth. Oh, I was like, this is what I expect. Um, and this is why I gave it five bloody stars and King Crooked the win because he nailed the hook, he nailed the verse, and Joel really couldn't compete with him on this. He's mm. done it. He's bloody done it. He's bloody done it. I'm in the game. Oh, who who shall I agree with? Hmm. We got the Joel team and we got the Crooked team. Well, I'll start with the beat. I like the beat. Um, Eric Sermon and the Boogeyman. I don't know who that is, but I know Eric Sermon. And Eric Sermon is not known for his soul sampling. But isn't isn't doesn't Eminem reference Eric Sermon in one of his songs? He probably does. He's a big name. He's he's a he's a big name in hip hop. Okay. I'm pretty sure he does. He worked a lot with uh, Redman. Redman is Eminem's favorite rapper. So where where did he mention Eric Sermon? In um, one of his new ones, I think it was in the Marshall Mathers LP too. Okay, I can't. I wouldn't be able to tell you the exact song. Well, he's just a he's a person in hip hop, so I'm sure he did mention him. No, but it yeah, was he, in Eight Mile. It was in it was in the movie Eight Mile. It, it was in okay. his Lickety Split verse V Rabbit um, verse. He said, he, "Yeah, go on." Sorry. Um, I'm just going through it. Don't be sorry. Never be sorry. Thanks very much. Hurry up. Okay. Um, (laughs) Eminem says, this guy raps like his parents jerked him. He sounds like Eric Sermon, the generic version. This whole crowd crowd looks suspicious. It's all dudes in here, except for these. (laughs) Bitches. (laughs) That's good. And then he says, oh, no, I have to finish this off. So I'm a German, eh? That's okay. You look like a fucking worm with braids. These leaders of the free world rookies. Looky, how can six dicks be pussies? <laughs> All right, so now we're going into our eight-mile movie review. Matt, let's start this off. <laughs> okay, what are on, your thoughts? I would love to do that. But just before, could I just go back to that Eric Sermon line? So yeah. what does that mean, the generic version? Like, well, a shitter version of Eric Sermon. Yeah. Oh, okay. Eric Sermon is, uh, I guess, he, uh, reading into that line, maybe you could say Eric Sermon has a slightly weird voice. I don't think so, but why well, he's, he's un- eh. oh, I no, know. actually, you're right. No, because G- according to Genius, it says Eric Sor- Sermon, also known as E Double, is one half of the iconic hip hop duo EPMD. EPMD. Yeah. yeah. B Rabbit's mm. accusing his opponent of being a bootleg sermon, but lacking the skills that makes E Double legend. Um, it could this could also be a joke about the gay rumors that have surrounded Sermon throughout most of his career, as exemplified sure. by him calling the entire crowd suspect. Well, um, I didn't know about the gay rumors. Uh, me either. Yeah, and it makes no difference to me. Yeah. No, but like I mean, yeah. at the end of the day, genius is always like. It's it's clutching at straws sometimes, genius. You don't know what's yeah. real and what's not. Yeah, it does sound like it. But yeah, so yes, we ha- what have we established that Eric Sermon is a person that exists? Yeah, yeah. Okay, we've done that. So, and this is by Eric Sermon, the beat by Eric Sermon, referenced famously by Eminem in the movie Eight Mile. Yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I was just all I wanted to say was that he uh I don't know him for his soul sampling. Like he is not a soul sampling producer in my from what I can remember. But here he's it's like he's a master of it because this is this is awesome. Um Yeah. The hook, I already gave you my opinion on that. It's just, you know, wordy is always a problem, but not the way they did it here. Like it just works so well. Um, so Joel versus Crooked. I'm gonna go with the big Crooked Eye. He is the winner. Correct. 
the winner. Like, Joel's verse seemed, like, to be honest, it seemed a bit generic to me. Like, he's oh. talking about his... No, 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 no. Like, this is, this is his subject matter. He's talking about his car and his watch and being in the club and looking good and the bank teller is hitting on him. Like, whoa, that's so cool. None of that, none of that's interesting. None of that is interesting. The only thing that's interesting is when, uh, you jizz in your pants when he said 50 cents. That's the only interesting thing. And you spewed in a bucket when you heard that. Exactly. No, I <laughs> spewed in a bucket because I knew you guys were going to love it because he said fifth. He said the word fifth. No, I liked it because, you know, he had a nine. Like he, he had a, a four fifth on his, on his hip. I liked that he used that reference, but then he I made know, it I more know. gangster. I know, I know. But the fact that it was 50 cent, uh, you know. Helps. Exactly. But, um, yeah, so his verse is just, you know, apart from, like, one line, the rest is pretty generic. Whereas Crooked, he wins by a mile. And I thought, Matt, you'd like, like, his opening, um, his opening lines are like movie references. Did you get the references? Yeah. The cabinets yeah, were bare. Mama could barely prepare the recipes. I got on my grizzly to go get the honey. Wanted more than the bare necessities. Jungle like, Book. Jungle. Correct. Like, that's so funny. Um, I had the second Jungle Book reference in two weeks. What was the other one? Um, oh, I can't remember off the top of my head, but I remember, like, reviewing the last podcast. Now, it was a definitely a Jungle Book reference. I cannot remember that for the life of me. This is the first one for me, baby. Um, yeah, so he's just, he's straight out the gate. He's got me with his funny, you know, jungle book reference. Like, that is, jungle book and Disney movie is the furthest thing from gangster, but he makes it work. So good. Like, his verse also feels a lot more personal than Joel's. Like, cause Joel's not actually saying anything. But yeah. Joel is like saving his, uh, Best shit also. He's saving his shit for later. He's more personal stuff. So it's okay. He had a rest on this one. Yeah. He but won like, the first one and yeah. decided to have a rest on the second. Yeah, exactly. But even though I like Crooked Eyes versus a lot more, I don't actually think Joel's verse is bad. Like it's just no. lacking in substance. He sounds good. He definitely sounds good. So I really enjoyed the song overall. And I'm also giving it five stars. Wow. Correct. Correct. <laughs> I, I, I what just, do I win? Do I win something? I got the answer to it. No, you just you win the ability to continue doing this podcast. Oh, thank you. Matt, you're, you're out. <laughs> no, Matt, you're in you're being controversial. Because what's interesting now is Being that good. we're we're both everyone's one all with Joel and King Crooked. But you and I, Danny, are one <laughs> all the same way, and Matt's the exact yeah. opposite. Yeah, that's interesting. I wonder what we're hearing different. No, it just shows how wrong I am. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you oh, someone someone bumped you in the head or something. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there <laughs> it is. <laughs> it. And Danny, Danny, oh, missed it. Danny missed it famously once again. Well, I get yeah. it now. I get it now. Did he say caddy as well? No. No. Did he say LBC? Did he say LBC? It doesn't work. It doesn't work then. <laughs> you need to say the whole thing. You need to say the title of the song. <laughs> All right. Moving on to track three before I get ripped apart by Danny again. <laughs> uh, track three, Caddy Bump LBC. Danny, you're very strong on this. Why don't you kick this one off? <laughs> what? Wait, how did you get that impression? Because you were very strong on my, you know, my connection to this new track okay. and you were offended <laughs> that I did it the way I did it. And so it makes me think that uh, you really want to review it. Yeah. Well, yeah, I guess, I guess you're not wrong. You, you seriously read into what I said, but you're not wrong. Um, yeah. So this straight away, it has this really modern super West coast feel to me am i alone in this or did you guys feel the west coast of it i didn't I Matt, felt, did you i felt the east coast to be honest but you're joking uh, 
don't you think this is like something that YG would rap over? This is a YG B. I was being facetious. Yeah, I could see YG on it. I was being facetious because of the the, the, the hook, but anyway. <laughs> oh, don't you worry. are a son of a bitch, mate. You are a son of a bitch. Um, <laughs> he's sad. He's sad. He's Wait, sad, so you bro. do agree? You do agree with me then? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so I'm much. I'm not convinced. Matt, your approval means a lot to me. I know. <laughs> so yeah, it's super West Coast. Like it sounds like something YG would rap over. I love YG's first two albums, so I like this a lot. Um, Crooked Eye is definitely doing his thing. Like, he switches up his flow multiple times throughout the song. The hook is nice and catchy, especially Matt's favourite part. He's sad, he's sad, he's sad. Low beach. Like, that is it's just easy to cruise to, that, that kind of hook. Um, he's got some dope lines as well. I think my favourite is, um, we wrap the chorus of Fuck the Police. Because they just got a casket for us. They acting like if you're born black, then you're asking for it. Yeah, that I is, had those lines oh, too. Oh, 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 that's chilling. That is that is awesome. Um, to be honest, this is one of the best solo Crooked Eye songs I've ever heard. Really? Like, and I'm not saying it's the, it's it's the you know, I haven't heard that many Crooked Eye solo songs, so take take it like that. But this is, uh, I can probably name three Crooked Eye songs, and this is one of them. And this is one of the best, except because Aaron, all, this, here's the thing, whenever we're, we're cruising in the car, Aaron always, without fail, puts on a mm-hmm. Crooked Eye song that uses an instrumental from an old classic hip hop song. That's true. Yeah, because what he does is the weeklies. That's what it is. It's his series, the weeklies, and he just raps over other beats that are slightly updated, some better than others. But he just he takes a lot of old school beats and raps over them. And as Danny, I'm sure you're about to say, oh yeah, the problem is if you don't beat a classic tr- hip hop track, you'll just go back to the hip hop. The classic one all the time. That's exactly what I was going to say. And like, yeah, that's why the main reason that this is one of the best Crooked Eye songs I've ever heard is that he's using an original beat that sounds great. Like the modern West Coast sound suits him so well because he is fully West Coast. He represents West Coast hard and this is West Coast and he takes full advantage of it. And like you said, a big problem I have with Crooked Eye is that he loves to take classic hip hop instrumentals and just alter them slightly. And then he raps on it and he calls it a song. So as a general rule, as a general rule, I don't like when rappers do that. Yeah. But just a heads up, I'm going to speak about this issue again very soon. Hmm. But this is an extremely easy song to listen to. I like everything about it. It's an easy five stars. Bang, three from three, five stars. I know, I know. We're going well. Name name a better like <laughs> <laughs> Name a better trilogy of songs other than these three on hard. Like seriously, like how how <laughs> do, how could this in any way beat Mandela? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. How, Keep going. How, how could it beat Napoleon? Keep going. One more. <laughs> One more. Come on. Come on. Don't stop now. You can do it. I can do it. And how can it beat Huey? He's looking it up now. Oh, yeah. He got yeah. on the phone. Ju- he got on Google just in time. What a <laughs> lucky. What a hero. Uh, sorry, my internet was really slow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. But it's seriously, if you compared those three to those three on Sci High, like who, who's the winner? Who's the winner? Are you are you actually asking me that seriously? No, not at all. Okay. If I was to compare these three to those three, these would be one star. These would be trash. Yeah, but you didn't give you didn't give some what what? These would not be trash. <laughs> yeah, I was I was about to retort and I was like, ah, these are trash. What? 
Oh, I feel like I'm going fishing at the moment. It's just like no, 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 no. You're not. You're not. You're not uh, translating your sarcasm. Well. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. You sound too serious. <laughs> No, these are no. They're good tracks, but it's just like that's one of my problems. I always have. It's like I'm giving it five stars, but then like five stars compared to what? Like I guess it's just compared to the song. Yeah, no, that's, that's always our issue, though, isn't it? It's always yeah. our big problem. Like if you compared this to for Danny, a five star track on you know Hell on Earth, like where would it sit then? Where would the, the would the rating be different? Like, but where would anything sit then? Yeah, everything is is extremely relative. It's extremely relative from album to album. It, it changes every time. Yeah, yeah. Fair. Like Matt, what do you think? Well, I, I just want to say, if Matt Matt's question, if if these songs appeared on Mob Detail on Earth, they would be three stars max. <laughs> <laughs> genuinely, 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 compared to yourself on Hell on Earth. Yeah. Jeez, that's damning. <laughs> but but they're not. They're actually five star songs that I like a lot. Yeah, yeah. It's all about in comparison. Yeah, it's the relative. thing is, it's all relative. The Hell on Earth album is, and we're we're almost reviewing that album. But yeah. the Hell on Earth album is full of you know top the highest quality that you can get. Yeah. So it's like you know best of. Yeah. So when you, of course when you compare the best of class. It's always going to be hard to be the same five stars. Yeah. It's like and these, there's a five star rating system. Yeah, and these songs do not belong on that album. It, it just doesn't mesh. The vibe would be off. It would be jarring to hear, you know, Caddy Bump after, you know, drop a gem on them. It wouldn't work. No. So, Matt, give us your shit opinion on this song. All right, here is the shit opinion. What do you think <laughs> I am going to give this song? Well, um, I thought you were going to give it five stars. Aaron? Uh, I actually wrote, quote for quote, in my review, this beat feels like a Danny track. Oh, oh and I, I thought this was a Matt track because it's so West Coast YG and I know Matt loves YG. Because I picked it for Danny for sure, yeah. so you got me. Um, you got me. For Matt, I don't know. I think I'm going to say I reckon he gives it four stars. Oh, I don't know. I think there's something he's not going to like. Okay. All right, here we go. I'll start with my favorite lyrics then, because I'll go. I'll work backwards. <laughs> my favorite lyrics on Caddy like Bum. Memento. This is like the movie Memento. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my favorite lyrics are another sh- another. Sh- you, wait, 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 whoa, 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 whoa! You have to say the lyrics backwards as well. Okay, all right, I got Please. it. Please, okay. if you can do that, that'd be very impressive. Okay. <laughs> God, I'm struggling. I'm struggling now. No, don't all right, do say it, it normally. Do it no, normally. No, no, no. Okay. No, please don't do it normally. Okay. <laughs> You're gonna ruin it otherwise. Yeah. Right. So my favorite lyrics are. You know what's up, rolling up, pulling up. My kid committee is showing up, shooting vitties in my city with my ends. It's going nuts. We animals look us up. The director. (laughs) And, yeah, I I just love that. (laughs) Again, shout out to our committee. So I was like, yeah. Yeah. And then, like, just like, you know, we animals, like we aggressive. Like, look us up on Instagram. We have a page. Like, come on. (laughs) Um, The, direct, the director, Fiddy, he's shook as fuck. Like, yeah, like he's, ah! he's, he's, means he's hot. He's got, I love this now. He's got yeah. a problem. So it's like, how could this not be the favorite lyrics of the track? Uh-huh. <laughs> um, but yeah, so they're my favorite. Um, you know what it comes down to? I know what you were both saying about other lyrics that are better than the ones that I've chosen on the past three tracks. However, when I choose lyrics, you, I've said this before. I usually choose them because they make me smile. They make me laugh. I can like have a connection to myself in them. Like I can see that. So it's like, you know, I know there are technically better lyrics than the ones I've mentioned, but these are just ones that stood out for me. So I was like, yeah, I like that. Um, In terms of his sound, like this is what I want more of on track. Just King Crooked. Not saying that Joel is bad in any way, but like Mm. I 
love King Crooked Sound. Like when it, I saw it was just him on this whole track, I was like, right, let's go. Like this is what I wanted. Um, so yeah, I definitely prefer that to Joel. Um, and I loved this hook. Ooh. I absolutely Damn. loved the hook. Um, it's simple. The punchlines, like the scheme, is pi- obviously pills, bills, heels. Like it, it's it, like any Dumbo, like me, can follow along with this. And then, <laughs> of course, you know, it's got the east side, east side. Like at the end, like that's yeah, that's gangster. So it's like there's nothing you can sort of say about this hook that isn't great. Um, the verses, yep, absolutely fire. Loved it all, and the sound. It's got the double whammy there for me. And the instrumental is one of my favourites, if not the favourite, on the mm. album in its whole entirety. So, <laughs> given that, <laughs> this is, for me, the first five-star track of the album. Yeah, 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 yeah. Damn, Got boy. Got in. Aaron, you know yeah. nothing. <laughs> I know you, boy. all right i'm gonna jump in it's interesting because i had different lines to what you guys said but i'm gonna start with the beat um the beat is grimy and as i said it feels like a danny track but it i didn't love it i did not love this beat i thought it was the weakest so far because you are not you are infamously not a west coast person correct you don't know You've never listened to Snoop Dogg Doggy Style, have you? I went through it, and I just didn't like the sound. And I know it's a classic album. I wasn't a huge fan of the sound. My God. Snoop would be like, oh, (laughs) he'd be personally hurt. He'd be rolling in his grave. Isn't that what you want to say? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. (laughs) R.I.P. Like, where do we (laughs) talk about that before? We were, like, talking to someone, and I think it was on, like, a trivia or something. Yeah. And then, like, yeah, there was, was a picture of LeBron James and Kobe as a question on trivia. No, 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 no. It no, was, it was just James LeBron. Mike, no, it was LeBron James and Michael Jordan, and 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 the person doing the trivia was like, "Oh, this is uh when it when it came to LeBron James, she was like, oh, "All right, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah." She couldn't tell the difference between LeBron James and Kobe Bryant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. gotcha. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just some, uh, just a little bit of casual racism there. Um, <laughs> Anyway, but the hook wasn't as good, in my opinion, as Get Your Money. I thought Get Your Money was 50 cent quality hook, top class, and this was not. It actually didn't work for me, this hook. It just didn't, it wasn't as smooth as the last one. I didn't feel like I could chant along with it. It just didn't work. But having said that, the bars are amazing, like insane. I hang with the gangsters who get deported. Their cane is just just get imported, too dangerous to get extorted, get sprayed when the hit is ordered, done banging, your shit's in orbit, don't play with them ends, forfeit the game, or get murdered, and it ain't reported mob shit. Ooh. That Ooh. is some top-class gangster shit right there mm. like to me this is all about his bars yeah everything else i'm not a huge fan of but these bars alone are amazing but because of that i give it four stars mm. i cannot give this five stars because i'm not a huge fan of the beat and i'm not a huge fan of the hook what do you re- what do you reckon that is he correct look you know, he's entitled to his he's entitled to his wrong opinion. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Uh look, if anybody uh No, don't try to transition body, here. Don't try to transition here. It's, <laughs> oh, when should I try and transition? Never. <laughs> Give it some time and then try again. Alright. <laughs> if any <laughs> Alright. I feel like I feel like Matt and Danny are going to be catching some bodies oh, when uh, you find no. <laughs> in a ditch. I set you up for failure, didn't I? Yeah, you, you really did. You really <laughs> did. <laughs> That's what but we're a good team. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, All right, 
track four, catching bodies. Yeah. I'm going and last. I'm no, 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 no. I'm going on this one, boys. Yeah, I said I'm going last. Okay, good. <laughs> All right. Catching bodies. This is the track that all, we've all been waiting for. And <laughs> is it? It's some. <laughs> well. <laughs> oh, and by, Aaron, just say this is the track that you've been waiting for. Yeah, this is the track that I've been waiting for. <laughs> the produced by none other than Apollo Brown, and we've spoken about Apollo Brown time and time again. Yeah. Um, we spoke about him on, today. Yeah. So Apollo Brown, I've been a huge fan um, for, for a while now. Danny, you've been even longer. You've listened to every single one of the things he's ever done. Since oh, since um, the thing that was before the left, since his – oh, God, I'm so annoyed. I can't think of the name. But, yeah, but the left came out in 2010. I think that was the same year that, that I got into him. So 2010. Yeah, that's 10 years of Apollo Brown, and he's done a lot of shit. Um, and none of it is shit. It's all so good. Yes. Um, but let's get into the review. So straight away, you can tell he's got that signature vinyl crackle straight away from the very beginning, and it sounds so good. It's just the little touch. And the beat is actually a little bit repetitive, like throughout the whole thing. At the start, you're like, oh, it's a bit repetitive. But then it really picks up. It gets the soul sample once it hits the hook. And that's when it elevates to the next level. Um, and this beat just was fire to me. Um, especially when he added the hook. It just feels epic. Um, cause I went back and I actually listened to the 97, uh, Manta Lita. Mentality. Mentality. My bad. <laughs> Stop making up words. <laughs> I went back to the 97 Mentality Copadana beat, and this Cap one's better. Copadana! <laughs> Copadana. Cap Copadana. He's, doing it, he's doing it to wind you up, Danny. He's definitely not. He's butchering it. I'm not. I'm not. I'm butchering it. Yeah, um, yeah the, <laughs> the Mentality Capadonna beat. Um, <laughs> you got it. You did it right. Yeah, I nailed it. I'm, yeah. I'm learning. I'm learning how to speak English. Yeah. Um, uh, but I think this one's better than that. So not, not, it's how similar is it though? Not at all. Incredibly similar. Incredibly similar. I, I think this one's better. better. Yeah, but but you know why? Because you've never heard that one before, and you've only heard this. Maybe. And and which one have I heard for years and years? The Capadonna one. No, the Copadonna one. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, go on. Anywho, <laughs> I also love at the end. And again, Apollo Brown always does it. He lets the song breathe at the end, the instrumental, and you get to enjoy it on its own. So I love that. But the bars are so good. Mm. Like the bars are amazing. And he, Joel Ortiz, he bodies this shit. Like he goes so hard in the first verse. It is insane. Like he just, it's almost like he listened to King Crooked's last track on Caddy Bump. He was like, "All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna step up," um, yeah. and I could just quote the whole thing. But like, it's rooted <laughs> in me. Do you grizzly with the back of my paws? That's just a barehanded smack. Can you imagine my claws rip and grizzle you? Need a million feet of tissue and gauze to Ooh. absorb puddles. I pluck you. Reposition your jaw, stomp your favorite rapper's head, his brain spill on the floor. Oh. Like that is so nasty, dog. <laughs> like, oh, he's just he goes crazy on it, and you're like, damn, he's he's coming. Like we thought he was leaving stuff in the tank, and he's not leaving anything unsaid here. No. Then King Crooked goes, um, and He's he's also got a good verse, but it's not as good as Joel's. Mm. Joel beats him on this first verse. And then they have another verse each, a short verse. And I think that King Crooked's fourth verse, the, the fourth verse is better than Joel's second verse. But mm. to me, 
one of the standout lines of this track is lay your princess in the sky like she's Luke partner one hand solo out the window there's something for you to chew bucka yeah the way he says bucka oh it's so gangster it's so cool and I'm not a huge fan of Star Wars as you guys know yeah. but I loved this reference and the wordplay because Lay Your sounds like Princess Leia. Yeah. And she is Luke's partner. One hand Han Solo. Mm-hmm. One hand Solo out the window. There's something for you to Chewbacca, Chewbacca. He's killing you. He's shooting you. So this to me is five stars all day. And Joel Ortiz bodied this shit. And he takes the win for me. Yeah. No surprise. Absolutely no surprise. Matt, you're next. You're going last then, mate. Yeah, I said I'm going last. Oh, okay, good. This is <laughs> an Aaron track. <laughs> <laughs> is that with a negative connotation? No, no negative connotation. This is like <laughs> in the same way that you thought last track was five stars for me. I knew this would be five stars for Aaron. Yeah, because definitely. It has like a bad, neat, evil like feel at the end with like the back and forth, which I know Aaron likes, and like it's gangster. And yeah, it's just no surprises here. Um, I also liked it. Um, the instrumental I describe as like low key, but I can see how Aaron's saying like it's sort of building. Um, I don't censor five stars. I do not censor five stars. No, me either. <laughs> it's, not, it's, not, it's not a five star for me. Um, the hook, I can just absolutely leave. Like, leave it out. Don't even put it in there um, for me personally. Um, but Joel, hands down, wins this song, his song, um, with those exact lyrics that you mentioned at the end, Aaron. They're my favorite lyrics of the track. Um, I think King Crooked on this track, though, his flow and the way he mixes it up between like a faster pace and a slower pace and then like with the multi-syllables, I think that's definitely impressive. It's just that Joel stands out more because of those gangster lines he has that reminded me of like American History um, X, like curb, is it curb stomping? Is that like the, yeah, yeah, like with the brains on the floor, like I just, I don't know, I just got a movie flashback to that. Um, more of the Godfather. Oh, is it? Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Either your what is it? Uh, either your uh, brain or your signature will be on the contract. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. Just the images, just the image of all of this is just so nasty. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, no. So for me, this is a very this is a very good song. Um, this is four stars for me. Um, I, I would let, I would listen to this again and it might, in, my rating might increase, but I think it's just that hook for me. I, I had to take a star off. I did not like it. Really? I liked it. Like, I just liked the beat is underneath. It's just instead of catching bodies ends, not keeping it real and just goes three times. It's not too long. It's nice and short. You get that soul sample and the beat underneath. And then you just get their verses. Mm. I reckon it's just clean. Possibly need to re-listen to it a few more times. Um, and because it's a four star, I, I would. I would re-listen to this track. Mm. Yeah. So that is where I'm sitting for now. Okay. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. wow. <sighs> it's a weird one for me. It's definitely a weird one for me. So obviously I have a history with this, with this song. So, yes, in 1997, Cappadonna released a song called 97 Mentality featuring Ghostface Killer produced by the RZA. And this is basically, it's essentially exactly the same. It's the same instrumental. I don't know what Aaron heard, but it is, it is almost exactly the same instrumental. And in fact, like the sound bite, you know, the hook, instead of catching bodies, ends not keeping it real. That is from that song, 97. That's, that's Cappadonna saying 
that book. Crooked Eye even mentions it in his second verse. We damage your rap persona, come rap with the anacondas, giving end, ends hooks like Apollo sampling Cappadonna. So it's all there. I love that. It's all there. Like Apollo Brown, you know, he produced the song. He made very, very minimal changes to this version. It's essentially the same. It's obviously intended as some sort of homage to Riza and the Wu-Tang and that original song. There's nothing wrong with that. But you know my philosophy. Like, I'll probably listen to this song, Catching Bodies, once or twice. I mean, I'll only ever go back to that original song. However, it gets more complicated than that. Sure does. <laughs> what am I going to say? Well, it's just bars. They're amazing <laughs> bars. I'll get to that. I'll get to that. However, in the same year, 1997, the rapper Cannabis did a freestyle over Riz's instrumental, and he absolutely murdered this instrumental. So it's actually the Cannabis version that I will always go back to. And you might be thinking that Cannabis is also doing the same thing that I hate. He's rapping on a classic instrumental. But this is an exception to the rule, and I'll tell you why. Please do. In my opinion, 97 Mentality was a good song with a great beat. The Cannabis version is a classic freestyle over a great beat. So the Cannabis Freestyle is the classic version of this song, which is the reason why I'll probably never feel like listening to Catching Bodies again. Like, I actually, I just want to give you guys a little taste of the Cannabis Freestyle. Literally the first few lines of the song. Okay, listen. All right. Yes. I speak in frequencies dogs would have trouble hearing. Cannabis is the lyrical version of German engineering. Raw metaphors keep you high for months. Fly around the earth twice without refueling once. Ain't too many categories I can fit in when it comes to spitting because I'm overqualified for the position. The laser-guided lyrical hybrid creating scripts so sick I've got to arm wrestle my pen to write it. <laughs> yeah, that's no, fire. No, 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 no. I possess the lyrical ammo to battle and rip any one of you warm-blooded mammals to shambles. Okay? It, and, and he just goes on and on and every line is fire. Okay? So I just, I highly, 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 highly recommend Seeking out this cannabis freestyle from 1997. I think it's called, it's simply called DJ Clue Freestyle. So go listen to that. Anyone who's listened to this, both of you, definitely seek that out. I'm sure I've played it for you guys in a, in a car at some point in our history. I think you have. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. So having said all that, Catching Bodies is a really good song. It's exactly my type of song as well. Like, braggadocious to the max. Like, your shit, I'm the best. Here are a million ways that I'm better than you, and here are a million ways I'm going to murder you. Um, I especially like the back and forth that they do at the very end. Like, it's Joel, then it's Cookie, then it's Joel again. I always love a good back and forth. Um... I am also obviously giving the win to Joel Ortiz. I think Crooked has the better flow. That's what I said. Joel, yeah, he does. But Joel yeah. brings more griminess. And you know, I always give the win to the grime. Griminess wins Correct. every day. I mean, yeah, I literally have in my notes. His verse is nasty, dog. So I agree. <laughs> I agree. You and Aaron synced up on the nasty dog. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. How well, could you not? I know. It is. It is. Dog. Definitely. Um, 
I actually wouldn't say, apart from like the, the record scratching, I wouldn't say this is very representative of Apollo Brown's production style, to be honest. No. Like, although he has been known to use samples that have previously been used by the RZA in the past, like, he usually puts more of his own spin on them, like, way more, like, almost cannot recognize the original beat. Um, yeah, but he didn't really do that here. Like, Apollo Brown for me is the soul sampling legend. And he doesn't, that's not this. It's not, it's not this song. Um, so I'm still going to give this song four and a half stars. I'm just going to drop it half a star for that lack of originality. But like I said, it's four and a half stars, but I'm unlikely to revisit this song again. The cannabis version is just way, 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 way too good. Let me ask you this, Danny. When you first heard this and you realized where I was from, mm. did you lose your mind? Um, I, no, I don't lose my mind, but I'm instantly like, all right, I'm out. I'm out. This, this song is not going to work. Yeah. I see. That's, that's the hard thing. Yeah, I have way too much history with this. 50 Cent and made an entire career of doing this. So did Lil Wayne. Lil Wayne made his entire career, became the greatest rapper alive by just rapping over other people's beats. Mm. When it's a good beat, it's a good beat. Yeah. But it's a pet peeve of mine that, that I have very strong opinions about mm. and very few exceptions. Except when Kenny does it. Yeah. But, like, I gave this four and a half stars. I, I think, yeah. like, man, this is a very, very good song. Yeah. But there is a song that exists in the world that uses the same instrumental that is mind-blowingly insane. Yeah. So I think, is everyone 2-1 to Joel Ortiz at the moment? Um, well, isn't Matt different? No, nah, because it was one. Matt, who did you say was better, King Crooked or Joel? He said Joel. Oh, no, did he? Joel. Yeah, he said Joel. Yeah. So we're all 2-1 to Joel halfway through the album. No, we're not. Yeah, we are. Wait, how many songs have we done? Four. But the fir- the third one was uh, King Crooked solo track. I'm sure Matt gave the first two to Crooked. No, he did one each. I gave one to Crooked, then one to Joel, then the third one was Crooked, then the fourth one was Joel. Okay, so, so ah, so you you are in favour of Joel, even though you've said clearly that Crooked is your favourite by far. Correct. That is interesting. Well, let's see what happens next with track five, Lose Your Mind. <laughs> I, I yeah. missed it. Did you say I was losing my mind? I think you did, didn't you? I definitely did. Yeah, okay, I'll give you that. That was good. I was, the track I was is too wrapped up. Lose My Mind, though, however. No, it's Lose My Mind. Yeah, I said, oh, Danny, did you lose my mind? Did you lose your mind? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll give, yeah. I'll give you that. I was so wrapped up in, in my review, I missed it. So I'll give you it. Got him. Yeah, got him. Got him. Uh, we'll kick this one off in typical Danny fashion. Are you ready? <laughs> Vocals may not be as sweet, but. I, 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 I. About to lose my. <laughs> Mm. Keep going, keep going, keep going. I, 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 I. Man, that sounds good. This must be a good song. <laughs> Matt, can you do a, a remix of this? Yeah, yeah. So it'll be like, I, 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 I. <laughs> <laughs> it's worse than the original right. setup. Sorry. But damn, those vocals are sweet. <laughs> that did not go in the way I thought it was. <laughs> no, me either. <laughs> I also love Black Soul's smooth delivery of the hook. Oh, this is going completely in the opposite direction of the way you made it sound. The instrumental is simple, but I love how it builds throughout the song, starting off real, like, low, and then, like, picks up as we go. Both bers- verses are personal and fire. Um, I can't choose a winner on this track for me at right now, so I'm calling it a tie. Um, you can't do that. My, no, you've got to choose. My favorite, that, that throws everything off. My favorite lyrics are uh, dropped out of school without a parachute on my back and hit the streets hard. Hard. Yeah. 
Um, and then I think that was Crooked's um, from Crooked's verse, and then uh, from Joel's elevator stuck and there's no hot water. Another night taking bath in that stove top water. I just put that because um, it's just like visual, visually, like that's um, yeah, that's crazy. Um, yeah. So like, uh, there, there's nothing on this track that I don't like in terms of like uh, the song as a whole. A whole. Um, so it has to be five stars. This is my second five star track of the of the album. This sounded like a complete song to me. Well, I know exactly where you should. If you love this. You should go and listen to the song Goodbye by Slaughterhouse. I'm sure he's okay. heard it. Because good, this track reminded me of Goodbye. Yeah, but a worse version. Correct. Yeah. And then Tabernacle, Matt, which you have heard yeah. of Royce's, is actually like an extended version of Goodbye. Mm. I yeah. love Goodbye too much. I love Goodbye. Yeah. All right. Why don't you go, Danny? Well, go home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go home. Listen to the song. A bit rude. I am. <laughs> um, yeah, not not sure about this one. Like the way the way I thought, Matt. I thought you were like making fun of the a like because it's shit. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. No, you're both, you're both entitled to your wrong opinions here. Like, but yeah, yeah, go, yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. go on, go on, yeah. go on. Like. The heat maker's beat sounds like it's just. I reckon it's too mainstream. It's too poppy for my taste. Yeah. Like this, and now, now maybe, maybe I can see why you like it. This feels like one of those sappy, poppy songs Eminem would make for the radio. So yeah. I can see. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. So this I know why you'd like. It. And the hook only supports that theory. Like this hook. Doesn't belong on any hip hop song. It sounds more like Agreed. it sounds like the chorus to a country song more than it does a hook for a hip hop song. Not a fan at all. Um, yes, the verses are solid. The content super emotional. It's heartfelt. They both paint a pretty you know depressing picture of what it was like for them growing up. Joel's lines, like you said. Elevator stuck and there's no hot water. Another night taking baths in that stove top water. Like that's, that does not sound like a great living condition. That does not no. sound good to me. And, um, however, I think Crooked and Matt, you do have to choose by the end of mine and Aaron's review. I think Crooked has the more impressive verse. He's just more creative with the wordplay and the double entendres. I think he has the most powerful line as well when he says, you know the hood is sad when the killers are playing the role that your dad should have had. Yeah. That is, that's powerful shit. So the verses are pretty strong, but everything outside of the verses just doesn't work. I'm giving it three stars. That's, Huge difference. Mm. Um, yeah, I think what you've both touched on are the reasons why I think this was a hard one to critique mm. because the content is five star worthy in terms of how personal it is, but the the actual beat and like you said, the hook is trash. Mm. Get rid of the hook and. I would have just preferred their bars to just go one after another. Um, I think there was something more powerful in hearing only their experiences growing up. You, the the Black Soul hook didn't add anything to me because their verses were powerful enough. Um, mm. And, yeah, I don't think this instrumental is as strong as we've heard for sure. Like it just, as you said, Daddy, feels quite poppy. It just, I don't know, it doesn't feel as gritty as the lyrics sound. Mm. They almost don't go 100%. But I think if you look at the content, it's just, it's insane what they were going through. Um, and, like, it's just powerful shit. Joel says, to feel like in real life, you got to lie to feel like your real life don't feel like you're not alive. Mm. 
standing in the spot where your partner died, too young to see homicide, you traumatized. Mm. Visions of the back of your father's ride. Like, and then he finishes off with a young man with nobody left to idolize. Like, damn. Like, imagine that. Imagine that people are dying next to you. Your dad drives off. Like, imagine that. The imagery there is really sad. Yeah. But I think, as you said, Danny, King Crooked does come with the win only because, not because, like, it's hard to say he won in a sad track, but I think he said it in a more interesting way. And your line was the one that I had chosen when the killer's playing the role that your dad should have had yeah. is like, it's just one of those, it makes you think, it makes you stop and go, damn, like imagine that. And he talks about, you know, how his mum's boyfriend always had money for weed, but never had money for rent and how they never had electricity, had to plug his Nintendo through the window with the extension cord, <laughs> like to steal his his neighbor's electricity like ah yeah. oh, this whole thing is just heartfelt yeah um but the beat and the hook don't do it justice and for that i gave it four stars but Ooh. i also gave king crooked the win yeah um so like it's tight so it's too all for mine like yeah. with king crooked yeah. and joel um, and for Danny, I know it's too old for you at the moment. So it's real tight yeah. coming into the back end of this album. That's what she said, Matt, boy. Matt, you, oh, for f- it is real tight in here. You have to choose. I have chosen. I have chosen who Good. wins. Because <laughs> if you didn't choose, we'd feed you to the wolves. And the winner oh, is... Oh, no, that was too oh, obvious. He's too done obvious. it. He's done it, boys. Too <laughs> obvious. Too <laughs> obvious. Anyway, who won? No, nah, the winner is, for me, drum roll, <laughs> Joe Budden. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> uh, um, the winner has to be, just because of his sound, I prefer his sound more. So, Crooks gets it. <laughs> <laughs> I like the your default is just crooked up. <laughs> yeah, King Crooked. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can't like, separate him. You, no, you, both of you have that. Danny has that with Michi Darko on Flatbush. Well, I prefer his sound. Like, take away the lyrics, take away everything. If you could just hear Michi Darko, you'd prefer to hear him. Aaron would have the same um, with Royce. In if you were talking with Slaughterhouse, you'd you prefer Royce. No, yeah. not true. Yeah, I know, but not no, no, yeah, it's true. Not, it's not true. And what you're saying is is no, it's it's not. Oh. It just feels simplified. It's a simplified version. They're like just based on the voice. I'd listen to King Crooked. I didn't like King Crooked. I liked Royce the most. And then King Crooked's come out of the darkness. And now I'm a huge fan of King Crooked. And if, but I don't think Royce has the best voice. It's actually kind of generic. I think his flow is what's really good. Mm. Well, maybe, King Crooked has a better voice than Royce. Maybe Royce was an incorrect assumption, but Michi Darko is an 110% correct assumption for Danny. Like, yeah, but I would never just default to meet you. Like I'm, I'm looking at everything that they're saying. Yeah, well, in this track, which I've done, and I've said they're a draw because they're both content-wise. I like both of it. It's both fire. Now I'll have to go back to the sound that I prefer coming out of their mouth. Yeah. So therefore, King Crooked it's is the crazy. Winner. Though it's crazy that they have identical verses. Mm. Well, but it is tight on this. To be fair. They're yeah, both talking yeah, well. about their own personal shit, so it's like, well, pouring your heart out. I'm not going to say, like, one person's verse better than the other. Like, they're both so equal. Yeah, um, but there's other songs where they pour their heart out and, you, and you're not going to side there either. No, but they, the, the other song, other ones were like, they're clearly a winner on other tracks. This is not clear. That's why okay. I thought it was okay. a draw. So if you must... Did you guys see? Yeah. If you Did must, you guys see on the... What do you whoa, say? Whoa. Go, go. If you must make me win, if you must make me choose a winner, I'll choose Crooks. Did you see on that genius, the, um, they did a whole 10-minute video analysing this song, breaking it down, lyrics. No, I didn't. Crooked Eye and Joel, they broke it down themselves. Send it I, I do see the link. I, I did want to watch it, but I was careful not to actually watch the artists themselves talk about the meaning behind it. I actually did. 
didn't because I had my opinion first and then I watched it. And how was it? I mean, if you, if you're interested in the song, you you find it interesting. You seem to and like if you're not song. interested in the song, you won't find it interesting. Yeah, exactly. I was interested today because I was going to do this later on. <laughs> Probably wouldn't watch it tomorrow. Fair enough. Will yeah. you watch uh, Dancing with Wolves tomorrow as well? Or <laughs> what? Dancing what? With I wolves? don't know what that even means. It's a, it's a it's a transition, but <laughs> also it's also, but I've already done one. It's also, yeah. a, it's also a classic movie as well. It is, well, I actually haven't seen it. You like that movie? I do. I do like it. It's a bloody. It's Apparently, a bloody, it's really long. Enormously long. Yeah, the thing the thing about it all as well is it gets a lot of shit because it won the Oscar in 1990, the year that Goodfellas came out, and, and Goodfellas should have won. Everyone says, but I I can't say that because I haven't watched any of the Wolves. Mm. Well, that's what we're doing next week. We're reviewing Dancing with Wolves. <laughs> <laughs> Eight Mile Per. It doesn't have to be an, a hip hop like exclusively. It could be movies as well. It could be just popular culture. Oh my god. Mm-hmm. What a rebel. Rebel without a cause. All right. That's a movie. <laughs> that is a good movie too. <laughs> Haven't seen it. <laughs> Danny doesn't typically watch good movies. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, only trash. <laughs> oh, how dare you. I'm the movie part. <laughs> All right. Track six, Wolves, brackets, B-K-L-N-I, Brooklyn, baby. B-K-L-Y-N. Yeah. I can't read anymore. You really can't. I'm struggling today. <laughs> um, All right, Danny, you started the last solo album. Do you want it? The last solo track. Do you want to take this solo one? Why not? Sounds like Let's a do good it. idea. Sounds like a bloody good idea to me. So, let's start at the very, 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 very start. Um, the fake out. The fake out at the very start. I thought that was really I cool. I love that. Yeah, I thought it was really cool. Like, it sounds like, so this is a Justice League beat, and it sounds like it's going to be a typical Justice League beat. Like, they work a lot with Rick Ross, Maybach Music Group, so they had that luxury hip-hop sound. Like, they did, um, my favourite song of theirs is Maybach Music 2, Rick Ross, Kanye, Lil Wayne, and that is just, Mm -hmm. that's rich man music. That's their brand. So it starts, it starts, it's going to be that. And then, like, it turns into this, you know, clearly East Coast boom bat sound. And, like, this is Joel's solo, and I like the contrast between this and Crooked Eye solo track, where Crooked is rapping over a very West Coast sounding beat. And Joel, for his, he gets a super East Coast sounding beat. So that is awesome. Um, the hawk is simple and effective, I reckon. I like the howling. Uh, ooh, ooh, I like that. I <laughs> yeah. Like that. And it's, it's a little bit of a storytelling song, which is always fun. And I know Aaron's going to love that. Um, from what I was able to understand, so the concept of the song is that Joel is having like a conversation with his drug supplier and it turns out that his supplier is selling to the competition yeah so joel is actually there to take all his shit baby and i like the way it all like it's so it slowly unravels from the first verse all the way through to the end of the second verse like he's just for most of the song like he's just having a civil conversation and then he finally reveals at the end that he knows everything and the supplier is screwed like, yeah. you can imagine this is if this is like a movie scene. Like, the scene would be so full of tension with the supplier sitting there, sweating bullets, wondering, you know, if Joel knows that this, what, like, what the supplier has done. Because Joel's playing it cool up until the very last moment. Yeah. So, Joel, he's done a really good job. However, however, if we compare both, Solo songs. And this is where I think me and Matt will differ from you, Aaron. Maybe. Probably. Um, Maybe. Actually, I'm going to say it now. Definitely. Um, if we compare both solo songs, I still prefer Crooked's track. I just prefer that beat over this one. And Crooked just sounds really good on that song. 
Um, Joel isn't really doing any like lyrical, miracle gymnastics on you. Like the story is great, but if I ever like zone out of the story, I don't think the instrumental is strong enough to hold my attention. Whereas on the Crooked track, like I can easily throw that on and vibe to the instrumental and Crooked's flow, like even if I'm not really paying attention to the lyrics. Mm. So I'm going to give this four and a half stars. It's close. I gave Crooked's five stars. I'm giving this one four and a half. So I'm giving Crooked the win. Matt? No, Aaron, you go. You go. All right. I love that fake out. I like you, Danielle's like, oh, shit. Mm. This is not going to be good. And then they go into this gangster type vibe. And it's just, I just had my screw face on for this. <laughs> like I was just like, mm, mm. I, I started feeling it. It's slow. It's ominous. And as you said, Joel's flow is not as impressive as King Crooked's, but everything he raps here is extremely deliberate. I almost, I think, wrote like it was almost like fast talking in a way. Mm. Like he just managed, it just, but it sounded really nice, um, even though it's not my favorite type of hip hop flow. Um, and you're right, this is a story. I love a story track. And he has some cool lines. Admire the nicer things from afar, but ain't complain. Just put our brain to work and create our own lane. But see my lane picking up and I'm going to need the whole thing. My connect ain't got it like that and I'm done with small change. Mm. Like, he's just going, he's like, I'm not going to complain, but I'm done with small shit and I'm going to get what I want. And like you said, Danny, just at the end, what do you know? He brought us here, you fucking liar. Change of plans. I think I'll take everything I desire. Mm. Like he just, it's almost like he had that they had no choice. He's just going to take it and he's going to rip it off them. And he's like, and just that howl and welcome to Brooklyn is just so gangster. Yeah. And that outro, almost one of my favorite parts because he was like, be safe. Good luck with that, though. <laughs> it's just such an ominous thing to say to someone. Yeah. yeah, it's just got this ironic feel like he's the one who could absolutely destroy you. And this hook, to me, works better than the King Crooked hook. So I gave this four and a half stars as well. Yeah. But I gave the last King Crooked solo four stars. Yeah. And so because of that... Joel wins mm. in what? my mind. Why did you drop half a star? Because I just didn't feel like it was worth five. There wasn't as much gangster shit as potentially there could have been. Okay. Like, it's cool, but it's not. Uh, and the flow. The flow wasn't oh, yeah. as good yeah, yeah, as yeah. I love. Yeah. So it went from five to four and a half. It was just a little slow. But this was still good and four and a half stars and therefore the win. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. I think we should just move on to the next track, to be honest. <laughs> oh, no. How? Uh, you can't think this song is bad. Yeah. I reckon he's going to tear the shit apart. Yeah. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't think he thinks it's a story song. I think the story I, absolutely passed him by. I think, I, I think maybe either I'm sleeping on this shit or maybe I, like, I just missed something, or I maybe I'm right. I don't know, but I would. Skip, <laughs> I would. Skip, this is a skipperoo. This is a skipperoo track for me. Um, I would not yeah. listen to this again by choice compared to the other things on the album. This wouldn't be a track that I would go back to. Um, I found, but uh, if I could describe this song in one word, I would describe it as boring. I found it very boring. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't know. I think I need to. I think now that you have both given it four and a half stars, now I need to actually go back and listen to it again and see if it changes. Because compared to everything else, I thought this is the weakest track on the on the album. Um, but then again, you know, you you both thought probably that would be lose lose my mind. Maybe that's because of the poppy sound. But this for me just gave me nothing that I really really liked. Um, uh, not even the story. Not even the story. Didn't 
I missed it. I feel like I missed it. I definitely missed it. Um, I Plus, know. you are like 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 we know. Aaron is the East Coast, you know, dude. He doesn't venture West Coast very often. You are West Coast. Mm. So this this is the most East Coast song on the album. Okay. So kind of understandable. But like, ah, uh, yeah, it's just. Did you find it was lethargic? It was a lot more mellow. It was like a mellow, more mellow, like rap, like his flow, like. Um, I can kind it of. It was slower. Think, yeah. Yeah. I don't think it was lethargic. I think it was really deliberate. Yeah. yeah. Methodical. Hmm. Well, I need. To- Just let us know what you think. Stand by your your review, um, because I'm sure when you were reviewing it, you definitely thought all these things. So I'm interested to see your reasoning behind tearing this shit apart. Mm. Yeah. I just don't think it was like a track that like I connected with instrumentally, like in the lyrics, the, 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 the hook, it just, I don't know. It just didn't hit me. So it didn't hit me yet. So that's why I was like, no, I'd skip this. I'd skip this next time I'd listen to this album. Um, and mm. of course, that means that King Crooked would take the win for solo song. Um, but I think I'm buying. So, yeah. So the instrumental was so bad that you could barely pay attention to the lyrics, and you didn't realize it was a story. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like, like you were a little bit like you were saying, I could listen to the caddy thing with shit lyrics just because of the the beat, whereas this. I feel like I just missed the lyrics because the beat didn't get me. Yeah. I think that, that's that, actually that's me. I, I the beat needs to get me before the lyrics do. Like I need to be, and that's fair. Uh, yeah, but as it stands, if I'm standing by my review because it's a skip track, I need to give it two, and that is wow. incredibly hard. Two stars. Two yeah. stars. That yeah. is insane. Yeah. That's trash. That's a trash song. Yeah, yeah. It's my it was yeah. my lowest scoring like song on the album, and it's only upwards from here. I, I think if you well, even, if you even realised it was a story, you would have given it higher. Yeah, yeah. I need to listen to it again. Yeah, I yeah. I just think you you miss something. But having said that, maybe you you will stick with it. Maybe it's not enough to be redeeming. Um, but, but yeah, I, I don't Aaron, know. Aaron, wait, wait, wait. Aaron, if you could use one word to describe that song, what would you use? Lovely. You're welcome. Oh, <laughs> I know you were struggling. Thank you. Struggling. Yeah, I was. I was finding something, but uh, you stepped in. This is the type of teamwork that I <laughs> want from all of our transitions. To be honest, <laughs> uh, I'll, I'm start, like I'll, I'll start off this track. So. Leave. All right, hold on. Let me introduce it. Let okay. me introduce it. Yeah. <laughs> You're so excited. Track seven, lovely. Two tracks to go. All right. So. Wait, wait, wait. Let me introduce it now. All right. Lovely. <laughs> Two tracks to go. Matt, your turn. Let's hear it. <laughs> Maybe we should. Wait, I want another go. I want another go. And re- <laughs> No, no, no. You go. You go, Matt. <laughs> All right. Track seven, lovely. It's how this track made me feel. It made me feel lovely. Um, oh, I really God. like this. Is that why you wanted to go first so you could yeah. say that? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I really like this instrumental. Um, it's dark and it builds throughout the track. It's just well crafted. And I did not know this until I, you were talking about producers on the album at the start of this podcast, but I looked at the track list and, and the who, who produced what. And funnily enough, mm. Lovely is produced by Ill Mind, which I, I've said that I really enjoyed that instrumental. And then I looked oh. at Caddy Bump, LBC. Ooh. And who has produced Caddy Bump, LBC? Uh, Ill Ill Mind. Hey! Can so, I just say, can I just say I was right? <laughs> I picked it. I picked it. 
But like, I find that so like, um, not even strange, just like, uh, maybe strange is the right word, but like so fitting that like, I didn't know that it was like those two tracks were produced by the same person, but I was like, that's the sound that I like. Um, but it makes sense. Yeah. 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 So that instrumental was one of the ones I was looking at, tossing up between a favorite on the mixtape. Um, I also like both of the verses, especially, Uh-oh. especially Joel's. Whoa. Especially Joel's, how he Whoa. spells out the punchlines in his raps. I know it's been done before. It's nothing new. However, I like it, um, especially for dumbos like me. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought that was good. Um, also, King Crooked, again, such a gritty sound. In brackets, I wrote in my review, screw face. <laughs> um, my favorite lyrics are <laughs> every day I wake I think up, I know every day I wake up to the same old thing it's hot as fuck my AC broke my windows stay open mosquitoes taking me to church these ends prey on me um, and I also enjoyed wake up hit the liquor store if I got a problem I'm gonna probably let the henny pour now the problem solved but the henny give me 20 more that's the way the city go um, I thought yeah. those two stood out to me. However, Ooh. however, there is one Ooh. thing that is stopping this track from being five stars. Uh-oh, hooker saw it next, baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I wish I could have given this five stars. All, I, all I'm going to say is, Joel, leave hooks to the professionals. I don't think that's Joel. It is Joel. It He's is joking. Joel. It sounds literally nothing like him. That, yeah, I, I know. I, I actually, and I wrote this down, I thought that was J. Cole. No. It sounds, no, it's, it it's not in the not, listings. It sounds absolutely nothing like Joel. I'm I'm almost, oh, I kind of want to say that there's a secret feature on here. No, because there was, if that was the case, he, there would have been a feature Sometimes like, they don't. Would have... But yeah, well, I'm going to believe you guys, but like it literally never crossed my mind that it was either of these two until you guys said it. I thought it was just a random, unnamed feature. I almost hope it is. I, well, I still think it might be. Whoever, whoever it is, leave the hook, call up 50 Cent, call up bloody Nate Dog, rest in peace, call up whoever... <laughs> you want that you know is going to be good at doing hooks because this is a trash hook. Like, Call up Nate Dog, rest in peace. <laughs> like, Get the Ouija board out, yeah. everybody. <laughs> give, a, uh, give a call. Call up, Warren, call up Warren G. Like, you know. <laughs> rest in peace. Rest in peace. But like, <laughs> you know, this. It, it, you, I want to hear what you guys say about this hook. To me, it's trash. So this yeah. song's lucky that I gave it four and not less. Mm. But yeah, four mm. stars for me. And and what, what, who'd you say won? Cook it up. Um, no, no, Joel. Joel. Joel won. Rest in peace. All right. <laughs> 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 yeah. Who wants to go? Uh, you can go, Danny. All right. Oh well. So, uh, um, what was your final rating, Matt? Four stars. Four big ones. Yeah. Four juicy stars out of ten. That's interesting. Um, it better be out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Um, so this is, in my opinion, the trappiest song on the album. And, like, for a modern trappy kind of beat, it's pretty good. But I feel like this is not the kind of beat that Crooked and Joel should be rapping. Mm. I also thought that that was J. Cole on the hook. And I still, I still don't think it's Joel Ortiz. Um, the hook is really strange. I agree. It's, it's, it just, I don't know if it's bad, but it does not suit their style. Again, it does not. The delivery is poor. It's very poor, and it's just, it doesn't suit them. I think it would work for someone else. It does not work for rapidy rappers, Joel Ortiz and Crooked Eye. Um, 
I really think they're out of their comfort zone on this song because it's so trappy. Like, I agree, Joel wins this track. Um, I've said it before, but I I love it when rappers use like one particular multi-syllable rhyme scheme for an entire verse. And Joel does that. He goes, you know, Pray on me, J O B, stay low key, H O V, they gon' be, wait on me, paid O G. It just keeps going. Like every line is the same multi syllable line. Um, so I love that. I actually love it. But yeah, like I feel like Joel and Crooked got hold of a B. Just, it just would have been better served by a more modern, trappy rapper, even a mumble rapper. I don't mind mumble rap. It's done right. I just don't think this this is their beat. I think they veered slightly too far out of their lane on this one, so it doesn't work that well for me. I mean, it feels like they were trying to tick another box, yeah, for like another type of audience. Yeah, I can see that for sure. But yeah, it's, that's not a box that I want ticked, and I'm giving it three and a half stars. <sighs> well. I'm gonna I'm gonna jump in and and round this shit off because I got something to say. Yeah. Um. Now let's start with the beat. This vocal sample and the beat. This is a masterclass on how to make an average beat using a vocal sample. Oh. It mm. didn't have the desired effect of you know actually suiting these two rappers now maybe it's you know beat choice that i'm critiquing here but this did wasn't hard hitting it didn't have heavy drums it didn't have a pleasant sound it just didn't suit the track Mm. so and the hook as we've discussed already is absolute garbage (laughs) absolute trash like take that shit home I also, yeah. I'm going to jump into Joel's verse, and it was cool with the multi-syllable. Syllable, but did you guys pick up on the corny line that he had? No. Go on. Yo, what are we drinking tonight? Some gone. Somebody gonna say oh, OE. Man. Tastes like pee. man. I ain't drinking that shit no more. Man, that shit tastes like pee. It's not that bad. It's not that good. It's not that bad, though. It is, yeah, it's, it's kind of cool. I understand why he's done it. I, I understand why he did to keep up the multi-syllable rhymes. I know, but it just it, was, it just felt forced and it felt corny. I guess, I guess. Um, I, I did like that he throws to King Crooked um, in there. Like, he has that one line in Joel's verse after he's like, that shit tastes like pee. Then King Crooked's like, Hey, yeah, whatever, man. It's better than say it's I'd G. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like it's that. just a cool throw in. I like when they they go back in back and forth. Mm. Um, but I, in my opinion, King Crooked won because I preferred his delivery and his flow on this. It just sounded nicer. Um, and it was still average. It wasn't his best either. Mm. But to me, it was just a bit better. Um, I the Matt, you said my my favorite line line already with the henny, and it gives you more problems. Um, I did also find that the the way he said she opened that door butt naked, she ain't had nothing on but a playlist, yeah. is a really cool way of saying that she was naked. I like that too. Yeah. It's like it's just a smart way of doing it, mm. um, and then it's like that body hella cool. Soon as she dropped her cake on the floor, I picked it up. Five second rule. <laughs> it's just funny. It's just funny. Yeah. Um, and usually, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of that stuff, but I think it worked here. Um, but yeah, I gave this three stars and the win to King Crooked. Mm, okay, it's changing now. Yeah. So where are we sitting? So I'm sitting on three all. Same. Same. Wow, damn. We've gotten there different ways, yeah. but we're all heading into Memorial Day. Oh, no! <laughs> with, you know, the final track, and let's see who wins. I'm so interested to see. It's all on the line. It's all on the line, baby. 
and the album starts with the heat makers and finishes with the heat makers. Yeah. Luckily, it's not the beat makers. Crooked would be happy if it was the beat. Makers. No. Um, All right. <laughs> I think that one went over Matt's head. <laughs> that joke. It definitely did. <laughs> uh, who wants to? All right. Who wants to start the end. Who wants? To, who wants to do the start of the ending? I'll I'll kick it off. My album. I'll finish it off. <laughs> okay. All right. From the very word go, oh. this is the exact type of beat I would fuck with. Woo! This is what Language. I'm looking for. Language. Come on. Yeah, explicit. Sorry. Sorry, <laughs> mum. Um, this is how you do a vocal sample. In contrast to the last beat that we heard, this blows it out of the water. Um, it was just so good. This is the way you feel. This this is why you finish an album, mm. and the content here is so heartfelt. Mm. Like they're talking about, you know, a funeral and their friends, and like they're just talking about the experience of that. And you're like, there is no way you can get upset at that. Yeah. And what's even better is that there's no bloody features. Mm. They they're finishing the album with their own voices mm. as they should be doing. Um, Joel is on uh, hook duties and I think he does a decent job. I think he does a good job here. I think it suits um, the the beat and he's still talking about, you know, the tough times that they're coming on. So I think he does a really good job. Um, it, if I look at the actual verses, um, it's it's just – heartfelt like i can't say that enough how heartfelt it was um like it wasn't the most gangster but it was good like he says but you my man so i'm gonna give you the last look and shit now your mother coming my way for her i'm gonna act okay but son i don't know what to say my mouth ain't moving nothing it's wild i just paused she gave me this long hug and smiled and said i'm okay but she ain't mean that. I could see she torn apart and that just hit me in my heart. Mm. Like you, like I think anyone who's been to a funeral can has experienced that. And like you guys have gone to a funeral from someone from my family. And so this reminded me of like you guys going to, to that and like supporting me during that and yeah. like making it easier mm. and like that you had to take a, uh, train and then a cab and like all these different <laughs> things to yeah, go yeah. um and so this whole song kind of reminded me of that yeah. and like having people there for you um so it just added that extra touch and i would say that king crooked had probably more of a gangster vibe in his mm. um and because of that because of king crooked's more more gangster vibe i'm going to give the win to crook whoa because he says things like, seen a couple of frauds taking pictures for the gram. This ain't the place to be chasing clout. Only fuck with you when you're papered out. But when you was down, I ain't, ne- ain't never come around. But we was different, homie. That's a true blessing. I'm looking around this church, learning a few lessons. To the homies who made excuses and didn't come, a heart, your absence left a huge presence. Yeah. Real ends do real things. Yeah. And that, to me, essentially epitomizes when you guys were there for mine. And therefore, it just hit me in the feels in that special way. And it gave King Crooked the win and this track a memorable finish with five stars. Yeah. I was almost going to say that I feel like, you know, because you are a Crooked Eye stand that you just wanted to give Crooked, you know, you wanted him to win. You had a bit of bias. But then when you pointed out that line, I'm looking around this church, learning a few lessons to the homies who made excuses and didn't come. Your absence left a huge presence. And the way you connected to that, I was like, all right, I understand. I yeah, it. I actually went into this album wanting Joel Ortiz to win. You're joking. Yeah. Why? You love Crooked. Because I knew... 
I knew that you would think that I wanted Kid Crooked to win. <laughs> yeah. So I wanted to prove you wrong. Yeah. But, um, but I, I couldn't steal King Crooked out of this. Okay. I think the connection with the with the verses just hit me in the right place. Yeah. So I had to give him the win and the five stars. He's done yeah. it. He's bloody he done it. He has done it. He has done it. All right. Um, I think I'll just go because Matt Matt's good at closing out an album. This is this is one of the. I think he's going to pull out. He's going to tug at the heartstrings. I think. So I'm gonna, I think he is. I'm going to get out. I know. Don't put that pressure on me. I'm going. Now. I'm going now. No, no, no. I'm going. I'm going. No, too late. All right. So this track oh, you is. <laughs> uh, yeah. Matt, do you want to go on it? I don't mind. I really don't yeah, mind. Don't put that uh, five star pressure shit on me, mate. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I'll just say that this is an incredible beat to close out the album. Like, and at first, I thought it didn't really match the content of the song. I thought it was really like, you know, big. It was a big sounding, and this is a really mellow, you know, subject matter. But like after a few listens, I actually started hearing the sadness in the instrumental. Like I don't mm-hmm. know exactly how to describe it, but it's almost like the instrumental is crying the way it's chopped up. So I actually love it. I think it works amazingly well. I disagree about the hook. I think the hook is nothing special. Like where all we got, that's a good message, but like the rest of the hook leading up to that line is just filler to me. It's not bad, but it's not great. Um, and I'm going to go against the grain. Joel wins this track for me and therefore the album. Um, I just personally, his verse feels a lot more personal. Like, not to mm-hmm. me, like it's not personal to my life, but it sounds like it's coming from a deep place within himself. Like it sounds like he's actually talking about a very close personal friend that passed away. Like you can yeah. really feel the pain, like all those lyrics you said on his verse. Like you can really feel the pain coming out of his verse. And I don't feel the same way about Crooked. But I still think Crooked Eye is good. And like you said, that line, that's the line I actually picked. Um, made excuses and didn't come. Your absence left a huge presence. Like, that's really powerful. But I just feel like Joel Ortiz dug really deep and laid some personal shit on the line. Um, so the hook is just okay, but it's a great instrumental emotionally impactful verses, and I am also ending this bad boy with five stars. That's how you do it, baby. Yeah. Jeez, boys, he's done it. And now the greatest ending to a podcast of all time, Matthew! <laughs> um, the winner of this <laughs> album is... Oh, no. My man, King Crooked. He, oh, no! As Aaron said, he takes the cake on this track and therefore the album. So well done, Fiddy, for making the right choice. <laughs> <laughs> My favourite lyrics are, we was all just kids eating forbidden fruits. Some of us branched off but didn't forget our roots. Never. Um, it's a bit of a... Um, what's the word for it? Like it's relevant, isn't it? Um, mm. to where we are right now. Um, so yeah, that was. It's definitely a feel song. Um, it's like the hook is okay. I don't love it, but I don't hate it either. So I'm in the middle between both of you for that one. Um, yeah. Instrumental. Oh, I don't know. I'm confused about it. I'm torn. It's it's a similar, uh, it's a similar feeling to the hook. I don't know if I love it or I don't know if I hate it or if I'm just in between with it. The hero of this song are the lyrics, for sure. Um, yeah, that's what. Yeah, that's what I take away from this song. So. <laughs> That alone, if I took the lyrics alone, like with with no hook, no instrumental, 
the background, like effects, anything like that, I would give it three stars based on the lyrics alone. Ooh. Whoa. Mm. Mm. Three stars. However, with the, the, the cook and the instrumental, I'm going to say I would give this track four stars. So it elevates it slightly, but not enough for me to give it a five. Um, yeah, it, it, there's something there that was. That's really interesting. I thought you'd love this for how heartfelt it was and that you would, yeah, no matter what the rest was, you'd be like, yeah, for content alone, this would be fine. The yeah. content is definitely fantastic. No, no doubt about it. But I'm looking for my racing to consider like everything in the song. So, yeah, I don't know. Again, this is this this is like Wolves, not in the sense that like the rating. It's definitely better than Wolves for me. But I need to listen to this a few more times before I can be like completely sold on it as a as a whole song. Yeah, but in saying that, I did like it. No, it is it is it's, it's, it's like a it's almost like a typical way to finish an al- an album. Like it feels like a Royce way to finish an album. Um, did I just drop out then? Uh, no. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, it feels like a. I don't know if you heard my last point. I said it feels like a Royce way to finish the album. It's very like thoughtful, very like yeah. introspective. Um, yeah, like I like it, but something wasn't right for me about the sound of it. Interesting. Like Danny was saying, like, first he was like, oh, yeah, the instrumental, he's not sure if it matched it. So, like, maybe yeah. that only comes for me for more listens than I, than I did already do. Fair enough. Yeah. Anticlimactic, though. You really let us down. Yeah. It wasn't the greatest <laughs> I've ever heard. You set the expectations <laughs> up. Like, oh, I'm the best thing and, like, oh, I'm going to drop some allegory, like, you know, shit. Yeah. It's like I convince Aaron to give the last track a five star rating. Like, <laughs> <laughs> mate, you set that bar yourself. <laughs> yeah, you're only as good as your last review. Yeah, <laughs> well, I really dropped the ball here, haven't I? <laughs> yeah. So, in the end, we had two King Crooked. So, me and Matt give King Crooked the win, and you give uh, Joel the win, Danny. Yeah, four to three. It's tight. Mm. For all three of us. Yep. So who wants to sum this up? I think there's well, only I believe- one person who can sum this up in one word, to be honest. <laughs> Hard? Uh, wait, is that, your, is that your su- summation, Aaron? No. Can we, just say, can we just say what your idea is? <laughs> yeah. My idea is for, for each of us to have a one-sentence summation of the album or even a one word if you can put it into <laughs> a word uh, okay <laughs> and do you, do you have a word <laughs> no what i have is a sentence okay <laughs> let us hear it <laughs> yeah hold yeah. on this is, I'm, I'm, this is this is killing me yeah this isn't gonna be Good. an even, even bigger moment than that's last review this is this is the greatest ending to a podcast. One send yeah. to rule them all. Here we go. Two hip hop artists going bars for bars and it's a bloody tight race. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> that is a fantastic summary, Aaron. You've done it. Thank you. You nailed it. <laughs> Nothing more needs to be said. Good night, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. Next time. Yeah. The review of Dancing <laughs> with Wolves. <laughs> uh, we've fallen off a cliff. Oh. Um, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna sum this up um, with you just the, did. my you just did. My fi- no, with my final rating, um, in favorite instrumental and my favorite lyrics. Um, so overall, I gave this four stars. It. It didn't. It wasn't. It didn't reach the huge highs we've seen on other albums, but it didn't reach the huge lows that we've seen on other albums as well. I think, think this was incredibly consistent throughout the whole way, and I think we saw that in both Joel and King Crooked because no one really blew the other one out of the water. It was tight in terms of their rapping the whole way through. So I think this album was well constructed. No skits. No wasted 
you know, seconds on this. Like there was no point where we were just like, uh, they should just cut all that shit out, you know, skip first minute or skip, you know, the last 30 seconds. They didn't waste any time on that. So I give them props for that. Yeah. Um, my favorite instrumental was Memorial Day. Yeah. I think that was constructed the best. Um, my favorite, I have two favorite lyrics. The first is, now I'm like the comedian headlining, I knew I'd get the last laugh. Yeah. But the one that takes the cake is, or the ones are, lay your princess in the sky like she Luke partner, one hand solo out the window, here's something for you to chew buck. Yeah. Mm. Just and that's the way he delivers it. Yeah. 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 Just for, you know, using the references really well, he made it gangster. The delivery, it's perfect. Mm. And my favorite track, Catching Bodies, because that shit was gangster. It was nasty gangster shit the whole way through, and that's what I love. Yeah. Excellent. That was more than one sentence there, Aaron. you got to work on that. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, it's supposed to be one sentence only. All right. I'll, I'll sum it up again. Catching bodies, enough said. <laughs> oh, oh, really? Oh, there we go. That's good, good. Yeah. You know okay. what? You, you, you literally just could have said catching bodies. That's all, that's all you needed to say, really. That so is true. It's, it's sort of like um, Black History Project 2 when, you know, when, when you say Master P, you know exactly what. You know, yeah. you mean. Well, Aaron didn't, but me and you did. Okay. Correct. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't sure if you knew what I meant in this one either, so I just, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, well, I'm well, just going to go next. Is- no, 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 no. You I have mean, to, you get the last eight. Album, you right? are the best at summing up albums. <laughs> you are the hero. Just let me get my shitty one out of the way. <laughs> all right, so I'm going. Um, <laughs> I just, I don't really, I, I actually, to be honest, I didn't prepare this. So <laughs> I'm doing, I'm doing <laughs> Yeah, you get your shitty out the way then. Yeah, I'm doing, I'm doing this on the fly. And it's actually really hard to do it on the fly. Um, Are you? Like, really? It's just like, this is, are you even like taking this seriously? Like, <laughs> <laughs> how many weeks did you have to prepare for this? You couldn't figure it out. Yeah. Well, kind of one week because like, you know, in a way. But anyway, um. I'm going to, so favorite song. Um, it's, it's really hard because Memorial Day, thinking about it, is, is in a really amazing song. The hook is average, but it's a really amazing song. Whereas Caddy Bump, I had no complaints, but it's just a solo crooked song. So I kind of maybe at this particular moment in time, I'll give best instrumental to Memorial Day, and I'll give best song to Caddy Bum. Although I don't feel good about it, but I really don't know what else I'd give it to. I don't feel good about it either, to be honest. Yeah, well, you just don't like the West Coast. You hate the West Coast. You started that beef. Well, Tupac killed. Um, <laughs> so, so that. Oh wow, good. you didn't blow that out of proportions at all. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so best lyrics, I'm also coming up with this on the fly. I'm going to go with uh, Cannabis. I possess the lyrical ammo to battle and rip anyone who wants on the ramble to shambles. Cannabis did say not feature on this album just for if anyone no, he didn't. just tuned in. I thought he was on Catching Bodies. No, no, he did the, he did the, um, he did the hook in um, in, Lo- in Lovely. <laughs> Oh, yeah. yeah. Lovely day, lovely day, lovely day. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it sounds like cannabis. Um, I'm uh, smoking cannabis. Yeah. yeah. I guess best lyric, I believe, was Crooked Eye when he said, oh, and I can't remember which one it was, but it was, he said, it's a sad day. You know, it's a sad day in the hood. Um, yeah. No, actually, I'm going with, we wrap the chorus and fuck the police. Because they just got a casket for us. They acting like if you're born black, then you're asking for it. Because that is just that is the most relevant thing that I feel that is happening today. 
Um, and I think this was made prior to George Floyd. Yeah, I think it was. And when did the George Floyd stuff happen? Really similar time. Okay. So it would have been made before. Yeah. So just super relevant. Um, so I like that. And yeah, I'm also going to give the album four stars. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's a strong, it's because it's so short. It's eight tracks. Like you said, no skits. There's almost like this, no filler. Everything they, that, the, that they wanted to put on the album, they put on the album. Some of it didn't work. Um, but they thought it did. Didn't yeah. work for me. Um, so it's, it's not like solid from front to back. Uh, there's maybe one or two weaker songs. So. Yeah, I'm going to stick by my four-star review. Joel Ortiz edged it out four to three. But, like, I, to be honest, I would pick, in general, as a general rule, I would put Crooked Eye in, in front of Joel Ortiz as a rapper. Agreed. But on this album, I think he just had the better, the better performances on average. Incorrect. Oh, go on. The album final level rating is four stars. It is a four star album. Oh, we've all synced up again. Yeah. Cute. Lovely. This happens too much. Lovely day. Lovely. <laughs> Lovely day. It's funny. J. Cole. J. Cole can do a good hook. Yeah. Yeah. So can kind of. I mean, not a 50 hook, though. Wow. No one's as shit as 50 cents. Oh. Uh, you said good incorrectly. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. This is what I'm going to say. 30 stars out of a possible 40. <laughs> <laughs> 30 stars out of five. So, <laughs> 3.7 stars out of five. So I'll round it up generously to four stars. Um, yeah. it, the favorite instrumental is surprise, surprise. Track number three. Caddy, Caddy Bob. Bob. Yeah. L- it just shocks me so much that you guys love that so much, and I, I, don't, I didn't. I don't, yeah, I don't think it should shock you, though, to be honest. You actually picked it. It shouldn't be shocking. <laughs> yeah, I know, but it shocked me that, like, I was... No, but I just didn't expect you both to like it that much. I actually did. I... I well, to be honest, I expected it to go exactly the way that it happened. Me and Matt loved it, and you didn't. Anyway. It'd be shocking <laughs> if I said, like, oh, my favourite track is, like, I don't lovely, know. Lovely. Day, lovely day. <laughs> or just another song not on the album. But Kate yeah. is my favourite instrumental. And my favourite song is Lose My Mind, um, track five. Jeez. I cannot believe mm. that's the worst. I can't believe that at all. That, that is literally my least favourite song, I think, mm. isn't it? Yeah, three stars. Yeah, that one got me. Definitely got me. Um, and my well, favourite... Yeah, I, I, I need out. to switch off the album. <laughs> <laughs> you might as well have switched off there, actually, because you're not going to like my favourite lyrics. Uh, I figured out how to pronounce that that um, company as well, because it wouldn't make sense unless I pronounce it like this. You're all exactly. rock... You're rock, you're rock Aluminum cans, your jewelry's Michelo. Mine got them green with envy. These ends Piccolo, so yeah. it must be Michelo. Yeah. Um, uh, works better, Michelob. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Chainor. Michelob. Chainor agrees. But yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway, so that is my final verdict on Hard. Um, to describe this album uh, in one word. In one word. Yeah. One single word. To rule them all. <laughs> um, it would be actually. I'm not. I'm going to go with not. I'm going to go with a sentence because a word's like ridiculous. A word is actually really, really um difficult. So, like, I would say yeah. that the title is misleading, but the artists bring the heat. Like something like that. Like they. That's good. They bring it. Like they definitely bring their skills. But I'm not going to say. This album is hard because, or, or my at least my version of what I think hard is like. Yeah. So it failed. The album failed in its mission statement. They just needed to change the title of the album. Like I don't know. 
And also, like, what's the what what is the album artwork cover? I don't get it. Like, I, I, don't, I don't know. Yeah, I don't understand. I didn't, didn't even look at it. Yeah, to be honest, okay. that's probably not not the right thing to do. But I barely looked at it. Yeah. Anyway, but no, it was good. Like, well, I, I, yeah. it was an Aaron choice that like I wasn't like. I was disappointed with. Yeah, I was looking forward to listening to it, unlike Chain Noir. <laughs> I feel, how can you say that? You had no idea who Chain Noir was. Yeah. And I feel like only retrospectively you're saying you you weren't looking forward to it. Yeah. Well, I think that, yeah, you're right, actually, because I was I was optimistic. Like, I was like, oh, it could be good. But, like, and reflecting now, I'm glad we did it because it was probably our funniest, like, podcast. But like I'm just t- saying, in terms of quality as a rapper, like they were our worst. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Okay, well I'm gonna have a go at this one word thing. You guys ready? Please. And Aaron, I want you to end this podcast immediately after. I'm gonna have the last word. It's gonna be one word to sum up the entire album, and the podcast is over. No one says anything after that. Are you ready? Ready. Good. Oh, you're such a piece of shit. (laughs) And cut and end. See you later. Thanks for listening to the show. Please like, subscribe, and follow us on Instagram at the underscore slim fitty biggie committee. And stay tuned for our next podcast. Bye for now.